Now, another phrase you need to know about is word stemming. The, uh, the phrase word stemming basically means thinking of uh, related but alternative words. So, for instance, an obvious one would be the word plumber or plumbers or maybe plumbing, um, which are all you know, spelt differently. They're, they're different words, but they're related words. In some cases, you might have um, another example, for instance, where you have the word website. It could be all one word. It could be web space site, two words, or it could be web, web hyphen site. Um, so all of these are different variations on a theme, if you like. And uh, it's important, really, to use all the different variations you can think of. Um, you might want to use uh, possibly a thesaurus to, um, to uh, examine some of the different um, words maybe you haven't thought about. Um, but it's important not to cram all these words into one page because it's just going to look like um, an attempt to uh, spam the index. But what you can do is spread these across your website, um, concentrating different uh, words on different pages and basically attracting um, um, different, different viewers depending on uh, which, uh, which particular uh, options you use. As I say, you can use the thesaurus to do this. Um, there's an online thesaurus. There's many of them. In fact, there's one at thesaurus.com. Um, or another nice way of doing it is to use something like Microsoft Word. So um, in let's say you have the word computer within a Microsoft Word document. If you double click on the word computer to highlight it, then press Shift F7. That will bring up the uh, thesaurus in the sidebar. And as you can see, it's suggesting different words. So um, the word we selected then pressed um, Shift F7 was the word computer, and it's come up with alternatives such as um, processor, CPU, mainframe, supercomputer, workstation, PC, laptop, notepad, um, etc. So again, it's another nice way of um, expanding your list of keyword phrases using uh, alternative words. Now, long tail phrase, uh, long tail search phrases. A long tail search phrase is simply a, a long phrase used to do a search. So, for instance. Um, you could have a short phrase such as plumbing or plumbers in Perth. Um, a long tail phrase would be something like plumbing services in Perth's northern suburbs. Now, there's probably very few people can actually type in a specific phrase. Um, and you, as we'll see later, there are uh, tools you can use with Google to actually see how many people use different phrases. But um, one of the things about long tail uh, search phrases is that what you can do is you can home different um, parts, different pages in your website um, to these long tail phrases. And in this particular case, as I say, it's um, plumbing services in Perth's northern suburbs. In this particular case, if you um, work that into a page, you know, maybe the title and the, um, the body text and the headers and the other things that we'll look at for uh, in inclusion of the keywords, you'll probably find that you're pretty much guaranteed to get the attention of the search engines with these sort of long um, tail search phrases. Some, sometimes people go for uh, short phrases, which are much, much harder to get sometimes to, in terms of search visibility. The long ones are much easier. So it's a question of how you look at it. Some people will say, oh, I want to put lots of effort into going for a specific short phrase, whereas with much less effort, you can get um, a long tail phrase to show up quite easily within the search engines. Now, there's various uh, Google te search techniques you can use. I mean, you can just simply type in your phrase and see what comes up. But um, there's various other features you can use within Google. So, for instance, you can use the tilde symbol. So, for instance, within Google, if you search for the tilde, cheap laptops, as you can see in this example here, when we did the search, um, as well as the word cheap, things like affordable or inexpensive, um, those are the sort of words that Google knows about. Google's getting smarter by the day and it knows about related words. And uh, as I say, if you're doing research um, on other people's websites, you want to look for websites that have related phrases, then this is as good a way as any, any are doing it. So if we tr try this for real, let's uh, bring up Google. As you can see, I've typed in the tilde key. Um, you'll have to find it on the keyboard. It, um, it depends which country you're in. It has a slightly different location on different uh, country uh, keyboards. But find that key, then just type in, in this case, cheap laptops. And as you can see, we've got affordable laptops here. We've got, um, what else have we got? We've got uh, cheap laptops down there. Uh, we've got used laptops down there. We've got sort of discount um, highlighted here. 
um, and so on and so forth. So, but basically, it knows Google knows about these related phrases. As I say, this is quite a good uh, good way of illustrating that Google knows this, and also it's a good way of using the uh, advanced search techniques to again search for um, slightly different variants on the keyword phrases. Now again, we can use Google to do other searches. So again, if we take the Plumbers Perth example, um, let's, let's say we wanted to search for the words Plumbers Perth within the title of um, local search engine results. If you just simply search using the, the phrase in title colon and then Plumbers Perth, which you can put in uh, inverted commas if you want to. And as you can see in this example here, it's um, actually shown up a number of web pages that have the exact um, phrase in it. Um, we've actually searched here for plumbers in Perth and as you can see that's come up quite a few times. Another thing you can do is you can search within the ULR of uh, a website. So for instance sticking with the, um, the plumbers website, let's say you wanted to research uh, plumbers in Sydney. You could type in something like uh, in URL colon and then plumbers Sydney which you could uh, enclose in inverted commas if you want. And as you can see in this case, the results come back as um, uh, plumbersydney.net.au. Um, we've got um, a domain here and within um, a subdirectory called Plumbers Sydney. Remember that this whole thing, the, the root directory, subdirectories, any file names, they, uh, they form the, the URR in its entirety. Uh, remember the URL is just the web address of the website. And as you can see in this example here, we found quite a few uh, different websites. Uh, all with uh, the words uh, Plumber Sydney within them. So again, it's another great research tool. It lets you find uh, other websites that rated your particular product or service. You can then go and examine those websites and basically see how they're using their keyword phrases. Uh, in the same way, you can use advanced Google, Google search techniques to um, search for in anchor um, text searches. Remember, the anchor text is the text within the link. So, for instance, if you wanted to find uh, or do a search for um, anchor text that was using the words uh, Melbourne Electrician, you would use this syntax here. The difference between in anchor and all in anchor is basically in anchor can be either or, whereas all in anchor basically means all of these words must be within the particular search. Now, in a similar way, uh, carrying on the theme here of using Google to um, help you with the keyword results, this keyword research, you can um, do a, um, a Google search with an actual text displayed within the website. So for instance, if we used uh, the syntax in text, um, colon, and then um, some text, or all in text, colon, and then some text. As you can see here, we've got an example here where we search for um, Cycle Repairs Adelaide, and sure enough, the text Cycle Repairs Adelaide has shown up within the body text of the actual uh, website. So it's not in the ULR, it's not in the title, it's in the actual body text. Now in a similar way, remember we're just using Google here to do research to find um, other websites that uh, use your keywords or phrases in different ways. So we can um, use another variant of, it, of an advanced Google search. So we can search by file type. So let's say for instance I want to do a search for um, all companies that are using the words SEO Training Perth in a file type called doc, which is basically a Word document. So what we're basically saying here is um, show me the results of um, websites that have a document displayed within the website and that document relates to SEO Training Perth. And as you can see in these search engine results down here, um, they're prefixed by DOC, which is short for document or a Word document. And uh, in this particular case, um, they're all from um, uh, SEO websites. So if we're going to have a look at this for real, let's do a search using the file type parameter. So we've typed in SEO Training Perth and we've uh, basically said we specified a file type of a DOC. And sure enough, as you can see all the way down here, these are DOC documents. So if I was to click onto one of these, they would open up uh, a Word document that was actually a downloadable file within the website. Um, apart from DOCs, there's various other things we can use. So, for instance, we could use PDF. PDF is Portable Document File. It's an Adobe Acrobat file. 
and as you can see in this particular case it's given me a whole range of PDF files um, in a similar way we could try uh, maybe something else we could try um, XLS uh, let's try XLS yeah, we've got various um, XLS files here that we can download um, but basically any of the main file types will be supported like this uh, let's try PowerPoint PPT so again in this particular case we're doing searches and these will show me um, PowerPoint files these are all PowerPoint uh, presentations I can download Now it's important to realize that um, when people search in different parts of the world they, uh, they search using different versions of Google. So for instance within Australia the, um, the default version of Google would be google.com.au. Um, the United States it would be google.com. In the UK it would be google.co.uk. And uh, it's important to realize that if you're aiming for local searches, you know, from an international point of view, you need to, uh, for instance if you're in Australia, load up the UK version of Google in order to see what results people get in the UK because these will be different from say the same search engine um, query within uh, say Australia or the United States or, or Ireland. You'll notice that um, down the bottom here we've got um, a little bit that basically allows us even if we're, even if we're in Australia to go to the google.com uh, which is the US site. This is generally displayed down at the bottom of Google and uh, as I say if you're in Australia and you want to see what Americans will get when they search a particular phrase then you need to go to the google.com. You'll quite often find that if, for instance, you're in Australia and you just simply type in google.com, then quite often that automatically resolves to google.com.au and uh, you see the local version. So you have to specifically tell Google sometimes, no, even though I'm in Australia, I want to look at the google.com version. International spellings and meanings. Um, we know we're talking about keywords here. And it's important to realize that um, different countries have different spellings, um, different words can have different meanings. Um, so for instance, um, in the United States, the word organize will be spelled with a Z, whereas uh, say in the UK and Australia, it will be spelled with an S. And uh, these are the sort of things you should take account of when you're researching your keywords. You know, do you have different keywords? set up for a different international target audiences.